Uh, joining us now is the former police officer, Norman Brennan. And Norman, one of the most striking elements of this story today is those two police officers who were injured, who intervened, who ran towards danger instead of away from it. Um, their heroism is clearly at the centre of this story today. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the first thing to say is that uh, all our thoughts foremost must be with the five injured people. We'll be going to give an update in a few minutes' time as to the extent of their injuries. And you're absolutely right. Um, two of my own police family, I was a police officer for 31 years, and I'm probably Britain's leading law and order campaigner on knife crime. Um, but I've been talking about this for 35 years. Um, so many families have lost their lives. Uh, mothers are planning funerals instead of futures. And getting back to your point, you're absolutely right. It's police officers, predominantly unarmed police officers, that will um, be turning up, first of all, to these incidents, although it depends on what type of call the police receive. Norman, just on, that, just on that point, is there an argument, considering shocking scenes like this, for more police officers to be armed? <laughs> Well, I'm an advocate of uh, fully arming of the British Police Service, something I've uh, spoken about for 30 years. Um, I don't know whether today's the right day to be discussing that, but uh, we really need to find out the extent of the injuries and the full circumstances. But um, yes, the streets of London and the streets of Britain uh, in my 45, 46 years of policing and law and order have never been so dangerous. Knife crime uh, is an epidemic stage. I've never seen so many stabbings. I've never seen so many murders. I've never seen so many children and youths carrying Hello. knives. And yes, they carry them for self-defense. They also carry them to commit crime. Neither are acceptable. And we are seeing the devastation of those that carry knives. And again, we've heard about machetes. Look, we deal with too much froth. Banning machetes there. You can buy a machete. You can go to a hunting shop. You can buy them online. You can stop people buying them, but let's get back to the crux of the matter. If we had a five-year mandatory prison sentence implied on our criminal justice system, I promise you this, and I've said it for 30 years, it will dramatically reduce those that carry knife and carry uh, and commit knife crime. Murders. These parents, how many more parents are we going to have to tell, I'm sorry, your child won't be coming home today? We were just reporting yesterday on this show, uh, two men trapped inside a shop in Birmingham. Uh, the shopkeeper, thankfully, had escaped and was barricading them inside the shop. They were wielding machetes. Uh, the knives are not only dangerous, a kitchen knife is dangerous enough, let alone these huge, huge, vicious looking weapons. I saw the incident myself. I see them day in and day out. Shopkeepers across Britain, God bless them, uh, they do their best to uh, give their community a service. And sadly, there are some within those communities and outside the communities that think it's OK to come along with a knife or a machete and rob them and sometimes maim or kill them. Uh, as I say, I'd, I've actually been trying to tell Britain for 35 years, 15 of them when I was a serving police officer, that the streets of Britain are going to become unsafe, that the public will fear walking the streets. They will fear travelling on transport and they will time when and where they go out. Many people now won't even go into London. London is lawless. I'm not saying every single street is lawless, but London is deemed as lawless because people carry knives, they carry machetes, they rob and attack people, they rob Rolex watches, so people now don't travel to London and wear their watches that many have worked hard for. I have never seen the criminal justice system in Britain in such chaos, and there isn't a particular offence, be it uh, stalking, robbery, burglary, you name the crime, that is not out of control. And when we look to our criminal justice system to protect them, the public don't see the police. The criminal justice system don't protect the police and the public and victims by giving deterrent sentences. And I'm afraid we see scenes like this today that most people just think, I've just got to accept it because I don't believe anything will change. Well, when you've got an attitude like that and a criminal justice system that fails us all, we're basically on the brink of anarchy. Mm.
There's also a, a crisis in the Metropolitan Police. It's the only police force in England that has failed to meet recruitment targets. It's also a police force where we've seen armed officers actually choosing to give up their weapons, yeah. give back their weapons. Fewer armed officers now than we had before because those who do carry weapons are dragged through the mill uh, even when they use them appropriately. For many, it's just not worth the risk. You're absolutely right. I speak to serving officers every day. Um, out of the recent 20,000 police officers that were re-recruited from the 22,000 officers that uh, were taken away under Theresa May and David Cameron, almost 5,000 have resigned. Officers are telling me now that they do not want to carry out stop and search for the simple reason is they won't be backed by their bosses, they won't be backed by the courts, and they are thrown under the wheels of a bus. Because if they get a controversial complaint, and by golly, I've stopped people with knives, it never looks nice. I've carried out stop and searches. They're sometimes loud, they're sometimes quite violent, um, but it's a job that the police do. So nobody wants to join the police anymore. The police service have become the Aunt Sally's of society. And getting back to the original point that you were saying is that Two of my family, two police officers, uh, are injured. They may well be seriously injured. And what is it they did? They were men and women that got up today, put on their uniform, and they know the flack that they get. They know the abuse and the insults they get, the threats that they get. They still got in their cars, and they still rushed to the scene. And why did they do that? Because they stand between good and bad, right and wrong. And sadly, some of them pay the ultimate price for trying to protect society. I mean, Norman, it is, it is terribly sad. And as you say, we await to hear their condition. Um, but Norman, talk us through how, as a police officer, you confront a man who is armed with a knife, like the one we've seen in the footage circulating there. A man wielding, you rock up, it's your job every day. You're called to a scene. You see a man wandering the streets, lurking, prowling the streets with a weapon like that. How do you confront when you're not armed yourself? Well, I'll give you a brief scenario. When I was a serving police officer, it was the early hours of the morning. I was unarmed. Uh, I just had a baton, CS spray. Uh, I didn't even have a stab vest. And uh, a burglar, an armed burglar, had burgled three houses in Chelsea. And had anybody disturbed him, there's a likelihood they would have been murdered because you don't carry a knife to commit a crime if you are not prepared to use it. Well, along with some other Met colleagues, uh, we were pursuing the guy. It was dark. It was in the early hours. Uh, I was a very fast runner in those days. I was in my area car. I joined in the chase. I overtook the suspect. Um, I didn't know he was armed, although he just carried out three armed burglaries. And in the darkness, as I tried to arrest him, he pulled out a blade that went deep into my chest. Wow. And the devastation that it causes is huge. People think that the police officers are these brutes that stop black people, that they've got nothing better to do than Nick motorists. But do you know what? We've got nothing really better to do than try and protect the public. And some of us never leave the police service without being injured in body, mind or spirit. I still cut, carry those scars till today. I don't even look at my chest. Norman, it's an incredibly powerful story you, you, you share with us there. Um, and uh, all I can really say is thank you for your service. Thank you for what you have done to keep people uh, in this country safe. Uh, Norman Bremen there, a former police officer.